Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation and thanks to the ADC for receiving us. My name is Melanie, I am a developer based in Paris and with my teammate Thomas, we are the developers of Gridsound, an online digital audio workstation also called as DAW. Today we will talk about the audio part of our project and how we developed it using the Web Audio API. First, I'll make a quick presentation of Gridsound, then we will explain how we use the Web Audio API to develop some of its functionalities. At the end, we will speak about the future audio implementations we are working on and the new technologies we will use. So, as I said, Gridsound is an online DAW. It is entirely made in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and it uses JSON data file. So now let's get a quick overview of the interface. At the top left corner, there's everything about the account and the composition. You can log in just right there. Up. You can find the composition here. So this is the local composition. And when you logged in, you'll find the online composition. Next, uh, you'll find all the DAW control button here, okay, for start or stop the composition, uh, uh, refresh, change the BPM, etc. Uh, and below, you can display or add hide different windows. Okay, when you when you load a composition. This one, for example, okay. All the patterns used or creating this composition are available in the block window. So now let's take a quick overview of the code architecture. So Gridsound is split in five repositories. There are two main repositories, the GSUI components and the GSWA components. The first one, obviously stores all the visual components from the features windows to the very little keys. Every UI component is a GS UI component. In the other side, the GSWA component is where all the magic happens. This repository stores all the audio tools we have built with the Web Audio API. So how do they communicate? First, there is the DAW core, it's the logical part of the DAW. Using controllers, actions, and the GSWA components, it executes the user's action, like uh, play or stop the composition, undo, redo, etc. Then there are the GS components, right there. Uh, each functionality, is like the piano, the piano roll, the mixer, the composition, each functionality is a GS component. These components make the links between the UI part and the logical part. The last repository is the DAW repository, but it is only used for some configurations or initialization, so we, we don't have to, to speak a lot about this one. Before continuing, uh, we have to speak a little about uh, the web audio um, basis. Um, to, to have a sound, to, to, play a, uh, to play a sound with web audio API, we just need two things, an audio source node and a destination node. We need to connect them, start the source node and in place the sound. No more things. Like here, we have we can have an oscillator node, which is an audio source node, connect it to the destination node and start it. Um, the oscillator, oscillator node will generate sound, but we we use also the audio buffer source node to uh, play um, an audio file, for example, for instance. It's the same the same thing. We connect it to the destination mode and we start it, and it plays the sound. Between the audio source nodes and the destination node, we can apply, we can apply um, as many nodes as we want, like filter nodes, there, or analyzer nodes. 
Several nodes can be connected to the destination nodes. Here, we can see that uh, we have this part of the graph and this second part of the graph, and the two branches are connected to the destination node. Um, nodes can also be modified with uh, their audio params, but we will see this later. So the two main audio source nodes we will speak about are the audio buffer source nodes, which, as I said, is used to play audio files, and oscillator nodes, used for, synth for audio synthesis. Having said that, uh, I will now show you some of fun audio functionalities on grid sound, and we will start with patterns. Patterns are various audio blocks used in the compositions. Some of them are created from audio files, and the other can be created in the DAW. Every patterns are stored in the blocks window, and then these elements have to be dropped in the compositions window. Let's see now the different kinds of patterns, and I will make a demonstration of how to use them in grid sound right after. First patterns. They are called buffers, and they are used to manipulate audio files in grid sound. You can import mp3, wave, or ogg files. Let's take a look at grid sound. Uh, okay, I close this window, I don't need them. So now I take um, one audio file, I drop it anywhere in the application, and the sample appeared just here, in the block window. If we want to use it, we just have to open the composition and drag and drop here, like that. OK. How it works from the Web Audio API side? If you remember earlier, we talked about the audio buffer source node. These audio buffer source nodes are needed to play audio data. That's the node used by the buffers patterns. When creating an audio buffer source node, we need to set them an audio buffer. Audio buffer contains an audio data array. This array can contain data from an audio file, but it can also be created and filled from scratch in the code. Here, in our case of buffer patterns, audio buffers are always created from an audio file. So when an audio file is dropped, an audio buffer is created, and it is set to a new audio buffer source node. And doing this, we can create a new buffer pattern. We also use these audio buffer source nodes to create the second kind of patterns, the slices. Slices patterns are edited buffer patterns. Using, using the slicer tool, we can modify a buffer pattern and we can cut, remove, or repeat some part of the original buffer, and it gives a slice pattern. The third patterns are the keys patterns. It's a group of scheduled keys created with the piano roll and the synths. From the Web Audio API side, keys are the opposite of the buffers. When buffers patterns use an audio buffer source node, which stores the audio data, Keys use oscillator node made to generate a sound at runtime without saving any audio data array. In the snippet, we see that when we create the oscillator node to generate a specific sound, the nodes rely on the audio waveform and on some other parameters. We can see that we set the tip to sign and the frequency to 440. The shape of the waveform can be a preset shape like sine or triangle, or a custom one given by a formula. A key contains an oscillator node and other information like its note, its start time, or its duration. Now the last patterns are the drums. They are created with the drum tool, and it's a group of scheduled buffers pattern. Let's play with the patterns in grid sound. So in the blocks window, we can find our patterns. In the first sections, 
there are the buffer patterns. It's called samples for now, but we will change this really soon to buffers. The second section is the slices. There's no one for now, we will create one later. The drums and the keys section. Keys are stored by synth groups. Uh, we will see this later, but to explain it quickly, with the synth, we can apply changes on the keys. All the keys in the same synth group have the same modifications applied. So now let's create a little composition. So I take this button, take this here, up, down, okay. Let's take this one here, up, and some drums. Okay. Up. Okay, let's play it. Okay, so basically it's how we use patterns. And now let's discover the tools used to create these patterns. As buffer patterns are created when importing audio files, there is no tool to create them. So the first tool we will speak about is the slicer used for buffer addition. When we drag and drop a buffer pattern into the slicer, we can edit it. Previously, we said that buffer patterns use audio buffer source nodes, which need audio buffers. When we use the slicer to edit a buffer pattern and create a slice, we modify the data contained in the audio buffer. Here at the top, we can see the visualization of the data in the original buffer pattern. Below, it's the visualization of the audio buffer contained in the new slice pattern. That's the one we will modify. From the beginning until this section, the data in the new buffer is the same as the data in the original buffer. This part and this part are the same. But from this slice to this one, there are all copies of this one. We can see it by looking at the visualization. We can see that this part is not the same as this one, but it's the copy of this part. And we can look here. The four slices are at the same level, meaning that they start at the same offset and they copy the same length of data. Now several audio buffer source nodes can use the same audio buffer, but as soon as we use the slicer and edit a buffer pattern, a new audio buffer is created for this slice pattern. Now let's take a look at the code. When we create a new slice pattern, we create a new audio buffer. As I said earlier, they don't need an audio file. They can be created from scratch and filled directly in the code. That's what we do here. We create one empty audio buffer, then for each slices, we copy the corresponding portion of the original audio buffer in the new one. Let's test the slicer on grid sound. I just need a new buffer pattern. Up, okay, must be here. Okay, yes. So I don't really need this window. Okay, I need the slicer. Okay. I create a new slice and drop my new buffer here. Okay, uh, I just need to know how many bits. Okay, 12. Okay. Let's listen to it. Okay, so now the new buffer is the same as the original one. We didn't modify it for now because there is four sections, but each section starts on the diagonal here. So it it means that the, the buffer is not modified. Now, if you want this part, the last part, to be here, we just need to take this section and put it aligned with this one. 
And as you can see on this visualization, this part is the same as this one. And it's not the same as the original one, see? If I put it like that, this is the original visualization. But now I want the last part copied here. So let's listen to it. Okay. And that's how the slicer works. And now we have a new slice up just here and we can use it in the composition. I mute this one, okay, and which is different from the original buffer. Okay. Let's continue with the piano roll and the synthesizer and speak about the audio synthesis. The piano roll is used to create the keys patterns, which as I already said, generate sound at runtime using oscillator nodes. The synth offers different tools to manipulate and modify this sound. The piano roll also offers tools to modify the sound, but it modifies each key separately unlike the synth which applies its changes to all the keys contained in all the keys patterns in the specific synth group. Let's discover this in grid sound. So here is the piano roll. We create some note like that. And just make a little composition. Okay. In the piano roll, we can create, um, let's do that, like that, apartamento making the not changing really smooth. Okay, uh, but we will speak about that later. Okay. As I said, we can modify each, uh, each key. Like here, I can modify it again, for example. Like that, and the pan, okay. Let's try. Okay, so this changes is really for each keys only. And then when we create this little com this little keys pattern, uh, we can modify it with the scenes. So the scenes have three parts: the oscillators parts, the LFO, and the envelope. In this part, we can add oscillators to modify the sound. So if I put the sawtooth so like that, we will hear the, the difference. Okay, see, now if I delete it, I can move. Okay, same with the gain. Okay, so here we can add oscillators. Now the envelope. Um, here it's an AHDSR envelope for attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. The envelope describes the volume and so the evolution of the amplitude of the notes. Here is the LFO for low frequency oscillator. It's another oscillator node which generates an inaudible sound, but the data generated will be used to modify the original sound of the keys. Okay, and here we can configure its oscillator here and the speed, the attack, the amplitude, and the delay. So every change here will apply to all the keys patterns I will add in 
this group here. If I add another key pattern here, like that, the modification won't change. But if I change the scenes group here, up, see, it's not the same. So the scenes modification applied to all the patterns and all the keys in the same group. Okay, so now let's discover these tools from the Web Audio API side. Remember the simple basis of these tools. Create at least one oscillator node per keys and modify the sound generated. For this, we can first use several gain nodes and add more oscillator nodes to connect to the main oscillator node of the key and play and modify the nodes parameters which most of them are called audio params. Before continuing, let's speak about audio params. Some of them are called K rates and the other are A rates. The first ones, K rates, apply the same value to all the frames during the audio process. The second ones, A rates, use their current value for each frames during the audio process meaning that if the value evolves during the process, different values will be applied to the different frames. Another important thing to know is that audio params inherit from audio nodes properties, and nodes can connect to them. This will be important for the LFO. So now let's start with the, with the envelope. For this tool, we think that showing you a simplified snippet of code instead of a graph is more relevant. But first, let's play a little with the envelope in grid sound. So here is the attack. Okay, it's the duration to for the sound to reach its address value. Then old is the duration we keep the address value. The decay is the duration to go from the address value to the sustained value. The sustained value can be specified here. Okay, let's do up more like that. Okay, and this is the release. It's when we release the key, uh, the duration that the sounds will need to go from the sustained value from the sustain value to, to zero. Okay, here if I push the key and I release, it doesn't stop instantly. Okay. Okay, so now let's get let's back to the code. Uh, to simplify everything, let's focus on the main concept. The envelope is a gain node where the key's main oscillator is connected. The gain nodes have an audio param called gain and it can vary from zero to one included. To manipulate the sound, we change the value of the gain. Gain is a A rate audio param, meaning that its value can evolve during the audio process. And between the time we start the oscillator node and we stop it, the gain value won't be the same. That's how the keys sound will vary. This code configures the gain parameters value. For the attack, the value will vary from 0 to 1 during the A duration. To hold, we don't do anything. It keeps the value 1. Then for the decay, the value will change from 1 to S. S is the sustained value during the duration D. Again, for the sustain, we don't have anything to do. It will keep the sustain value. And when the, when the release starts, so, so after the duration of the key, it will take R time to go from the S value to zero. And this is all for the envelope. Now let's see the, how the LFO works. For this one, a simplified graph is more relevant to better understand how we use the Web Audio API. As the envelope, the LFO has a gain node where the key oscillator is connected. To modify the sound, we change the value of this gain parameter. So now let's put aside this for two minutes and let's take a look at these three nodes below. The LFO is an oscillator, so it needs a new oscillator node here. We connect it to two more gain nodes here, okay? 
And these three nodes will also generate a sound, but as I said before, it's a low frequency oscillator. So the sound is inaudible. And in fact, this sound and the data generated will only be used to vary the sound created by our keys oscillator. Okay? So how? On the opposite of all we have already seen, this time we don't directly set values or transitions to this gain parameter. We make it vary, but using the LFO oscillator node. Remember that gain is an audio param, and we can connect nodes to them. So we connect the output of these three nodes here. We connect the output not to this gain node, not here, but directly to the gain audio param of the node. And that's how the LFO node can modify the key node. Now, playing with the parameters of this three node, will impact the settings of the original sound. We can play with this node, we can set the speed, we can change the tip, uh, we can play with this gain to change the attack, and this gain to change the amplitude. See, the attack, the speed, and the amplitude. This is the tip, and the last one is the delay. To change the delay, as this is an oscillator node, we have to start it, okay? And the delay specified here will be the delay we will, we will give to the start function to start this oscillator. How do we do that? Well, on the opposite of all we have already seen, this time we don't directly set values or transitions to the LFO's gain parameters here. Okay. We make it vary, but we use the low frequency oscillator. Remember that gain is an audio param, and we can connect nodes to them. So we connect the output of these three nodes here, not to the gain node, but directly to the gain parameter, to this gain audio param. And that's how the LFO node, this one, can modify the sound generated by the key oscillator. Okay. Now to modify these parameters, we just need to play with the parameters of these three nodes. Let's see. We have the wave, the delay, the attack, the speed, and the amplitude. The wave and the speed are specified using the oscillator node, okay? The wave is the tip and the frequency can be set here, okay? Now the attack and the amplitude are set with these two gain nodes. The delay here is set when we will start this oscillator node, because we have to start this oscillator node, we have to call the start function, and to this start function, we will give the delay specified here. Okay, and it's how we made the LFO using the Web Audio API. Now we've seen audio buffer and audio synthesis through patterns and tools. Let's see how to use and schedule them. Composition, piano roll, and drum tools have something in common. They are used to schedule patterns. The piano wall schedules keys to create keys patterns. The drums tool schedule um, buffer patterns to create drums. And the composition schedules all the patterns to create your own music. In one of these tools, let's take the drums tool. For instance, we place pattern on the grid. We have to take care about the current time, the BPM, and the number of steps per bit. Here the BPM is 120, so every 0.5 seconds we have a bit. So the first and the second kicks start at the first step of the first and the second bits. 
The first bit is here and the second bit is here. So the first one starts at the beginning of the playback and the second one starts at 0 0.5 seconds after the beginning of the playback. The third kick starts at the third step of the third bit. As in this example, we have four steps per bit. Each step has a duration of 0 0.125 seconds. So the third bit starts at 1.25 seconds after the start of the playback. Every time we start a playback, we have to create and schedule all the nodes we use. But to be sure that everything is correctly scheduled, we have to base the playback on the current time of the Web Audio API. The current time, in seconds, starts when we create the Web Audio context and it never stops to increment. Let's see in the code how it works. When we choose the drums tool and we click play, or each time we play a drums patterns, we call the start drums. This function starts a drums pattern. For each buffer pattern it contains, it creates a new audio buffer source node and it schedules its starts. To start a node, we have to call the start function and give it the start time. But the start time of a node is based on the current time. It is not an offset relative to the time from the beginning of the playback. Here we can see that when we call this function, the first thing we do is to save the current time. So when we schedule the node, we give this start time plus the offset of the pattern from the beginning of the playback. So if we look at our example here, the current time will be 7. So start time here is 7. And for this, for this kick, the drum when is 0. For this one, the drum when is 0 0.5. And for the third, the drum when is 1 second and 25 seconds. So for the three nodes, it will be 7, 7.5, and 8.25 seconds. That's how it works from the, for the drums patterns. For the key schedule, there is something more to manage. The buffers patterns has an end, because they are based on a data array, but the oscillator nodes don't. They can continue to play infinitely. We have to call manually the function stop. So to schedule them, we also have to calculate when they start and when they end. Again, we give to this function the stop time, which is relative to the current time. Here, we start the key patterns. The code is really similar to the code of the drum. The only difference is that we have to call the stop function. So for the start, it does, it's the same thing. We save the current time at the, at the beginning of the function, and we give to the start function the started time plus the key offset. For the stop function, it's the same thing, but we have to give the started time plus the offset plus the key duration. In this example, the current time starts at 9, so we keep uh, the BPM to 120, so the first key starts at 9, the beginning of the current time, okay, and its duration is 0 0.5, so its end is 9.5 seconds. Same thing for this key, it starts at 10 seconds and it stops at 11 seconds because its duration is 2 bits or 1 second. In the piano roll, we can also schedule a portamento. We already saw that earlier, so this is without portamento. 
and if I link the keys, it makes the first keys values to read smoothly the second keys values and tones. So let's try. Okay. Back to our example, let's see how to schedule a portamento. Here, we have two keys. As we already said, usually, each key has its own oscillator node. But when we schedule a portamento, we will remove all the oscillator nodes and only keep the first oscillator node. No matter how many keys are linked, we just keep the first oscillator node. Then we have to schedule it. So first we have to, to call the function start, like any other keys. Here we start at 9.25. Remember that in our example, when we click on play, the current time is 9. So the first key starts 0 0.25 seconds later, so at 9.25 seconds. Then we call the stop, but this time the duration is not only the this key duration, it's the sum of all the keys duration and all the transitions duration. So here it's 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.5 seconds. It makes one second. So we start, we stop at 10.25 seconds. Now we have to configure the transition. To make that, we have to call the set value curve at time function. This function will change the frequency. First, we specify the, the values. So at the beginning of the transition, the values of the frequency will be this one. And at the end of the transition, the frequency should reach this value. Then we specify the start time of the transition, here at 9.5, here, and the duration of the transition. So as we already said, 0 0.25. And that's all for this portamento. If we had a third key here with a second portamento, we should call this function a second time and specify the new values, the new values of the frequency, the new start time, and the new duration. That's all for the portamento and the scheduling part. Now we will talk about the mixer and how all of this is connected. Mixer is only a matter of connections. For each buffer's patterns or scene groups, we can set a channel where the sound is redirected. When we play these patterns, in the composition or in any other tool, the visualizations of the audio stream in the channels show us what's happening. The first patterns and scenes groups can be redirected in any channels. Also, any channel can be redirected in any other one. The only thing we can change is that the main channel can be redirected to anywhere because it is connected to the destination map. The main purpose of this is that we can apply effects to a specific channel and all the patterns that go into this channel. So here we can see that if we play this key pattern and this drums pattern like in the composition, we will see this audio stream in the chain 2, this audio stream in the chain 1, and the merge of these two audio streams in the main. Let's see this in grid sound. Let's open the mixer's window. Here we can see that we already have three channels, plus the main. And if we look at the keys patterns, we can see that this group is redirected in the bass channel, and this one, since 2, is redirected in the synth channel. So let's try it. Okay, so we can see here everything goes in the bus, then in the main. And for this group, it goes in the synth, then in the main channel. 
So same for this one. Okay. Now if we try with the drums, it's the same thing, but the drums use buffers patterns. So we have to look at the buffers patterns here. And we can see that the kick and the snare are redirected in the in the drums channel. So let's play this pattern. Okay, so it goes in the drums, then in the main. If I redirect this one in the, no, okay, let's create a new channel. Okay, if I redirect in channel five, okay. Okay, we can see the snare in the chain 5 and the kicks in the drums. And now everything is merged in the main. Let's try to play the composition. So here we have the first this pattern, then the second. Here we have the kick of the drums and here we have the snare. And everything is merged in the main. So now let's see how it works from the Web Audio API side. So as I said before, the mixer is just a matter of connection. So showing code here won't be really relevant, but we will use this game. So the first thing is that every channel have an input and an output point of connection. In fact, these connection points are just gain nodes. You can see here that we just use gain nodes. So if we want pattern 2 and pattern 3 to be redirected in the channel 2, they just have to be connected to the input gain node. Same thing for the channels. If I want the channel 2 to be redirected in the main, we just need that the output gain node of the channel 2 uh, be connected to the input gain node of the main. In grid sound, we can see the input and the outputs with these arrows. Here it's a yellow arrow, so it's the output of the channel 5, and it goes to the main. If I want to redirect the channel 5 in the bus, I just select this arrow and select the bus. We see that this row moved from the main to the bus. Now, if I click on the bus, I can see in red the input of the bus channel. So the input of the bus channel come from the channel five, and in yellow, still the output, and it goes to the main. Between the input and the output of the channels, there are several things. First, a stereo panel node, then a gain node. They are here to configure the pan and the gain. If we give a try here, let's play again these drums. Remember, the kicks goes in the drums, and we said that the snare goes in the channel 5. So I play. If I don't want to hear the snare, I can decrease the gain of the channel 5. Now we don't hear them. Same thing for the pan, we can move this or like that, okay. Then after the, the second gain node, there is two possibilities. If we apply the effects on the channel, then the gain node is connected to the first effect. If we didn't apply any effect, then the gain node will be connected directly to the output node. The effects can be added with this window. Uh, I can choose this channel and add a new effect like that and configure it like that. Okay guys, so it's the end of the mixer and the features part. Now we will talk about the future choices we will make and how we want to use the WebAudio API for the future implementations. During the development of GridSound, we realized that some features we wanted to develop 
we couldn't just use the native tools from the Web Audio API. So now we will start to use Audio Worklets and the WebAssembly. Now, what's Audio Worklets? It's an interface of the Web Audio API allowing the use of custom audio processing scripts. For now, our code using the Audio Worklets is not in production. It is still a work in progress, okay? And the idea of this implementation is first to increase the quality and the performances of the audio processing. It is possible because the custom script is executed in a separate thread. Then we want to develop uh, effects and tools that we can create without the audio worklets. And we also have in mind to develop some of these custom scripts in WebAssembly to take advantage of its performances near of what a native code written in C or C++ could reach. So the first step of the audio worklet integration is to recode the oscillator node and stop using the native one and trying to have the same results. To do that, we started with parameter tip and its standard parameters. Remember that oscillator node's tip can be set with these values, so we use formulas to recode it from scratch. Then, we have to save the phase between each process calls. The audio worklet has a function named process, which is called 375 times per second. This number is independent of the frequency of the oscillator we are creating, and this means we have to save the exit phase, the exact offset between two process calls, to have a perfect continuous waveform. Then we set the, the new nodes audio params like the frequency and the detune. After recording the basic oscillator node, we can add more functionalities like some wave features. We can make configurable the duty of the waveform. So the duty is the percentage of the period when the signal is active. Here it's 15%, here it's 50, we can see. 